This is Mr. Ashton going to do the Mathematics Numeracy Unit 2 Calculator Allowed Intermediate Paper from the summer of 2018. Okay, so on the first page, we've got the formula list, which we may need if we come back to that at some point. Question one says, in a survey of 720 students, um, they were asked whether they preferred to take part in gym activities, team sports or individual sports. They were asked to choose just one of these options. The results are displayed below. We're then asked how many students selected individual sports. Now, I can see that with my naked eye. That, that is clearly an angle of 90 degrees. That is 90 out of 360, which is the same as a quarter. There were 720 students selected. So it's 720 divided by 4. So calculator allowed. We could probably do that without a calculator in all honesty. Uh, so divided by 4 gives me an answer of 180. Okay, then. It then says part B. Carwin um, plans to split uh, team sports on the pie chart into football and other team sports. Of the students who selected team sports, two-fifths of them said they preferred their preferred team sport was, um, was football. What angle should Carwin draw to represent football? Okay, then. So if we go and have a look to see how many people did that already, we know that he plans to split the team sports on the pie chart into football and other team sports. Of the students who selected team sports, two-fifths of them said it was football. So what we want to do is go and measure that angle. So I'm going to go and measure the angle there. Now you can see on my protractor, I put zero on the line. I can't actually see where that line is. So what I'm going to do is come and round off here. And draw that a bit longer. So now when I put zero on there, in fact, actually I'm going to put zero on that, that line there. There. I can see that that is bang in between 130 and 140. So it must be 135 degrees for team sports. So because it's 135 degrees of what it is originally, two-fifths of them said their team sport was football. So what I want to do is work out what two-fifths of 135 degrees is. So to do that, I want to do two-fifths times by 135. So two-fifths times by 135 comes out to be 54 degrees. Okay, then. The next thing that we're asked is 720 uh, students took part in the survey. Only 45% were female. How many males took part? Well, if we know that 45% were female, then 55% must have been male. 55% uh, were male. So what we need to do is work out what 55 out of 100, so 55% of 720 is. So 55 out of 100 times by 720 tells me it's 396. No need to work out 10%, 5%, 50%, add them together because we have a calculator for this paper. Okay. Yeah, calculator allowed. It's, it's quite an easy question though, in all honesty. Okay, then, question number two. It says, Miss Price received her total bill for water. It is based on estimates of how much fresh water is used and how much wastewater is produced. Her bill was £58.80. Miss Price's actual use of water was as follows. Fresh water, 25.25 metres cubed. Wastewater produced, 22.31 metres cubed. Fresh water used uh, costs £1.08 per metre cubed. Wastewater produced cost £1.70 per metre cubed. In this part of the question, you'll be assessed on the quality of your organisation communication accuracy in your writing. Now, in order to pick up one of those two marks, it's only worth two marks, four are still for the maths, um, we're going to make sure we're using metres cubed, metres cubed, pound signs, as and where we possibly can. Okay? Now, we're then asked to say, by how much was Miss Price has been overcharged or undercharged show while you're working? Well, the first thing I'm going to do is work with the fresh water. The fresh water she used was £1.08 per metre cubed, and she used 25.25 metres cubed. So by doing 25.25 times by £1.8, say metres cubed, times by £1.8, that will tell me how much um, she should have been charged for her fresh water. OK, so that comes to £27.00. 27 um, and I'm just going to give a brief explanation nothing not an essay here just a brief explanation this is the cost 
of fresh water. That's literally it. You don't need to write an essay here. Then I'm going to work on wastewater. So we're going to do 22.31 meters cubed times by one pound 70. So 22.31 times one pound 70 comes to 37 pounds and 93 to two decimal places. I'm writing it to two decimal places because it's money. Um, so I'll say um, cost of cost of wastewater and rounded as it's money. Okay, that's what that is. So then the total cost will be, and don't just have the answer here, show where it's come from, £27.27. I'm going to miss the pound symbols for now because my final answer is going to contain them. Add 37.93. So 27.27 add 37.93 comes to, trying to catch me again, £65.2, but that's pounds 20. Um, and she was only charged that. Okay, so she's been undercharged. And we're supposed to work out how much has she been over or undercharged. So we need to state that because she was charged less, and that's what she should have paid, she was undercharged. There'll be a mark for that. By £65.20, take away £58.80, which equals £65.20, take away £58.80, £6.40. OK, and that should be enough to get all six marks there. We're then told to remember that one metre cubed is approximately, that's what those squiggly equal signs mean, 220 gallons. So I'm going to just write that down here. It's approximately equal to 220 gallons. We're then asked to use uh, this conversion table to find out how much fresh water Miss Price used. Now, because it's fresh water, we know earlier in the question that her fresh water consumption was 25 pounds, oh, not 25 pounds, sorry, 25.25 meters cubed. So to work out how much that is in gallons, what do I do to one to make it 25.25? Well, I times it by 25.25. That's the beauty of having it as one. Whatever I do to one side, do to the other side. So 220 times by 25.25 comes to 555, five gallons, 5,555 gallons. It then says, explain why part B is not the exact number of gallons. Well, it's all to do with this sign here. There's a symbol means approximately equal to. Okay, not exactly, not exactly that amount. That's when you use your straight equals. Okay, okay, have a quick read of the next question. I'll start completing it in about 10 seconds. Okay, it says Emrys, Layla, and Reese go shopping for fruit. They buy uh, pears and apples from the market stall. Then they give me the options and the price each one's paid. Notice there, that's in pence, that's in pounds. Let's keep everything the same. So I'm just going to change that straight away to pounds, or I could change that to pence. Um, we're then uh, asked how much change will Reese uh, receive when paying five pounds from buying these five pears and two apples. So what we need to do is work out the cost of one apple and of one pear then we can work out how much five pairs and two apples would cost and then subtract that from five, okay? We'll work with Layla first because she's only bought apples. So I'm going to make the following statement. Three apples is equal to 78 pence, which I'm going to write in pounds and pence to keep consistent with the one above. How can I go and work out the cost of one apple? Well, if three apples is that, then you divide the 78 pence by three. So 0 0.78 divided by three comes to 26 pence. OK, so we know that one apple is worth 26 pence. So we can now say that three pairs and 26 pence, that's this thing here, that's 26p, um, is equal to £1.22. So then by taking the 26 pence off each side, we can work out the cost of three pairs. So one twenty two take away 26 pence gives me, oh, I'm not divided, should be take away comes to 96 pence 
So then to work out the cost of one pair, we are going to divide both sides by three. That comes to 32 pence, so 0 0.32, 32 pence. So now we know that these are 32 pence each. We can then go work out that five pairs, so five lots of 32, plus two apples, so two lots of 26. If we find out what that comes to, five lots of 32 plus two lots of 26 comes to £2.12. So then we want to do £5, take away the £2.12 to work out what the change is. So £5, take away £2.12 comes to £2.88 change. Two pounds eighty eight change. Okay. Question number four. Karis has to write a report on the water levels of the River Tad. She has recorded the depth of the water in the River Tad between one pm and seven pm. This shows the graph below. What was the greatest depth of the water in the river? So the greatest depth of water in the river will be where the highest depth is here. So I'm just going to come off, draw a line there. You can see it's two squares shy of fifty. So that must be 48, OK, because uh, one block is 10, 10 little squares, each little square is worth one. So 48 over the page. It says in which of these 15 minute periods was the water depth increasing the most rapidly? Now, rather than looking at those, I'm just going to go and have a look to see. Oh, actually, I will highlight where they are. So 115 to 130. So let's just work out where that would be. So between one and two, bang in the middle, one two three four five little squares that would be 130 so 115 to 130 would be halfway through there so it's literally just this tiny little period here now that is increasing really rapidly because it's really steep 415 to 430 that's nowhere near as steep so they asked me to look at this bit of the graph then 5 till 515 hardly increasing at all 6 till 6.15, all of that bit there, that's all decreasing down there, okay? So where is it going the most? There, because that part of the graph in particular is the steepest, okay? So my answer would be 115 to 130. And then says, Karis looks at the part of the graph that appeared from 6 till 7. Describe what this tells her about the, the river. Well, I just said it, I've highlighted it. It's that bit of yellow there. It's decreasing, okay? It's decreasing in and that's depth that it's decreasing in okay so decreasing in depth okay so just take that for the y-axis it then says part d for what time period was the depth of the water greater than 45 centimeters so what i'm going to do is look where 45 centimeters is on my graph here i'm going to draw a line across there and we want to count the number of little squares that that is. So I'm just going to move the camera down and um, have the focus come in so it's a bit clearer. So we can see that it is one, two, three, four, five. Hang on. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I make it ten little squares. So ten little squares would be one hour. That's what we can deduce from this scale here let me just get the focus sorted again there we go the 10 little squares is what makes up an hour so my answer would be one hour okay then over the page let me just sort the camera out again a bit higher and you can see everything i'm doing okay it says mina is going on a holiday she hasn't decided where to travel in a travel brochure, Mina sees a pictogram showing the holiday destinations of 9,700 people. Pictogram showing the 9,700 9, people and the, a number of suitcases. It then says complete the key for the diagram. How many people is one suitcase? Well, what I'm going to do is count how many whole suitcases we've got all together. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. I'm ignoring any parts so far. I'll come and count those up at the end. So then 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. So we've got 23 whole ones. And then we've got a half there and a half there. So we cross both those out and write 24. And then we've got 24 and a quarter, a quarter of one. So I'm going to write that as a decimal. So 24 
9.25 suitcases, so just say SC for short, is equal to 9,700. Now, I need to get that to being just one suitcase and know how many people it is. To get anything to being just one, you divide it by itself. 24 and a quarter divided by 24 and a quarter will be one. And then 9,700 divided by 24 and a quarter comes to 400. So one suitcase represents 400 people. Okay. Over the page, it then says, oh, it's not doing there. It should be at the bottom. It then says, what is the ratio in simplest form of the number of people who went to Spain to the number of people who went to the USA? Now, you have to do that in the same order that they've given me here. They've given me Spain first. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six suitcases. I'm just going to write six to begin with. Um, and then number of people who went to Australia, one, two, three, four. OK, now what I could do if I wanted to is actually change that into the suitcases. But I want to make it in simplest form. So rather than making that times by 400 and that times by 400, I want to try and cancel it down to as much as I can. You can see they're both even, so I'm going to halve each of those. Three to two, then there's no number that goes into both three and two. So it would be this one here. Now, it has to be three to two and not two to three because it is Spain to the USA. It then says, look at the pictogram. The ratio um, of the number of people who went to Wales to the number of a country is two to three. So the other way around that we had. So two so for every two suitcases that Wales had, the other one had three. So how many did Wales have? Wales had three and a half, 3.5. And then we're looking for a one then that would be effectively two to three. So um, what's the best way to do that? I'm going to have a look here. I'm going to write the this down here and work at what five times two by to get three and a half so to do that i'm going to see how many twos fit into three and a half which is 1.75 so times by 1.75 means that um i need to do the three that we're told that it was in ratio by 1.75 so three times by 1.75 comes to five and a quarter so we're looking for the one that had five and a quarter. One, two, three, four, five. And a quarter is Italy. So it's Wales and Italy. There is another way of doing that, which is, I'll show you here very quickly, is two to three. What for times two by to get three, which is times by one and a half. So you look to see how many suitcases Wales have got, which is one, two, three and a half. And if I do three and a half times by the one and a half, I also get five and a quarter. So whichever way you prefer, but I think this way is probably easier. Part D, have a quick read. I'll start going through it in a second. Okay, then. We're told that Mina goes on holiday to France. She takes 590 euros with her on holiday. Mina only spends 40% of her euros. When she returns from her holiday... She exchanges the remaining euros to pounds for the exchange rate of one pound to one euro 18. Now, I'm just going to write that out here with a bit more space so I can go and write my conversion fact. To change pounds to euros, we had times by 1.18, similar to that method there, really. And then to change back, we would divide by 1.18. OK, now, that's probably my favourite way of doing currency. We know that she only spends 40 percent of her euros. That means that she must have 60 percent of her euros left over, okay? So I'm gonna work out what 60%, 60 out of 100, of her 590 euros is. So 60 out of 100 times by 590. She has 354 euros left over, okay? Now another way to do that was to find 40% of that and take it off, but it's a quicker way of doing it by knowing that all the percentages add up to 100. And then she changes the 354 euros to pounds. So you divide that by the exchange rate, divide that by 1.18. So 354 divided by 1.18 tells you that the answer is 300 pounds that she would get for that. OK, then question six, have a quick read through it. I'll start going through it in about 10 seconds.
Okay, then. It says, Grace sees a newspaper advert- uh, advertisement for Blake's Mopeds. Blake's Mopeds, best deal, valid if you show this advertisement. Moped, £400. The helmet should be £80, but we offer 15% off this price. Other costs payable are £151.20 for insurance and vehicle tax of £37. Grace is planning to save up for this offer. She wants to save uh, enough money for the... Uh, uh, she wants to save enough money for the first month's fuel as well. So we need to be told about fuel we are. The moped travels 20 miles on one on each litre of fuel, which is one litre of fuel. A litre of fuel costs £1.26. Grace estimates that she will approximately travel 350 miles each month on her moped. Starting this month, Grace will be able to save £60 a month. Okay. After how many complete months will Grace have saved up enough money for this offer, including the first month's fuel? So what we need to start doing is working out all of these costs. So the first one is easy. It's the moped at 400 quid. We then need to work out what 15% off £80 is. Okay. Now, to do that, I'm going to use the same method as I did before, that we know the percentages add up to 100. That's the original price. Take off 15%. We're paying equivalent to the 85% for that helmet, okay? So I'm going to do 85%, so 85 out of 100, times by £80. That's going to work out what the cost of the helmet is in the offer. So 85 out of 100 times by 80 comes to £68. Okay. Um, the next thing that I'm going to deal with, the insurance, that's easy enough. We just add that on and we add that on. I need to start working with the fuel. We know that 20 miles is equal to, I'm going to write that down here, 20 miles is equal to £1.26 cost. She's planning to go 350 miles. Okay. So I need to know how many 20s fit into 350. So if I do 350 divided by 20, that tells me I would times that by 17 and a half. So I need to increase the cost by 17 and a half. So I'm going to do £1.26 times 17 and a half, and that gets me £22.05. Okay. So that's now dealt with the fuel. So now we need to work out what the total cost will be. The total cost is going to be £400 the moped, plus the £68 the helmet, plus the vehicle tax, plus the insurance. So 151 20 I'll do first, and then the vehicle tax 37 plus the first month's fuel of £22.05. So if I add all of these together... 400 plus 68 plus 151.20 plus 37 plus 22 pounds and five pence i get 678 pounds and 25 pence for my total cost now she's planning to save 60 pounds a month so i want to know how many months that's going to take so if i divide that by 60 pounds a month I find out that it will take 11.304 blah, blah, blah months to save up. So if it takes 11 and a bit months, it is going to take 12 months in total to save up. Okay. Ah, so I had a lot more room on page 11. Okay, again, have a quick read the question. I'll go through it in about 10 seconds. Okay, it says, In October 2011, a charge of 5p for a carrier bag was introduced in Wales. Money raised from this charge is given to charity. From the period, or for the period, of the 1st of October 2011 to the 31st of January 2015, it was estimated that a total of between 16.8 million and 21.9 million was donated to charity. This is as a result of people buying 5p carrier bags. Part A. Calculate an estimate for how much per month was given to charity between the 1st of October 2011 and the 31st of January 2015. Okay. We know that the 1st of October till the 31st of October in 2011 would be one month. Two months would have been 
November included as well. Three months would have been December as well. Okay, don't worry, I'm not going to do it for every single month. Then in 2012, there would have been a further 12 months. 2013, there would have been a further 12 months. 2014, there would have been a further 12 months. And then it's until the 31st of January. So then I would have had one more month for January 2015. Okay. In total, I've got 12 and 12 and 12, 36 and 4. So I've got 36 add 4 months, which is a total of 40 months. Okay. Now, I know that's 40 months. And I know that the, the amount of money raised was somewhere between those two. Now, if it's somewhere between those two, I think it makes sense for me to go bang in the middle of those two. So I'm going to do 16.8, add 21.9, and I'm going to split that in two. 16.8, add 21.9, over two, comes to 19.35 million pounds. OK, but I could have chosen 16.8. I could have chosen 21.9. But I think logically that makes the most sense. I'm going to times that by a million in figures to just change it to a normal number that I'm used to dealing with. So times that by one and six zeros. One, two, three. One, two, three. Gives me the answer. 19,350,000 pounds. And then to work out that per month, I'm going to do the 19,350,000 pounds divided by the 40 months to work out the cost per month. So answer divided by 40, I get um, 483, 483, 750 uh, pounds per month. OK. Now, over the page, it says over time, there has been a reduction of the use of five P carry bags. This is because more people are using their own bags. What impact might this have had on the amount given to charity for September 2014 compared to September 2012? Well, as the more time has gone on, less people have, have uh, or less bags have been sold or charged by P4, you'd expect that there would be slightly less money given to charity or less money taken. OK, so less money given to charity. OK, then over the page, number 14, it says Megan and Roger both set out at the same time from home to go to a swimming pool. Rodri travels by car. Megan cycles straight through a park. Rodri's journey is uh, by car is five and a half miles. So that's this journey here. And then his average speed is 22 miles per hour. Megan's average speed is 12 miles per hour. And she arrives at the swimming pool five minutes before Rodri. Calculate the distance that Megan cycles. Give your answer in miles. You must show all your working. Okay. They will have given this in an order here that we need to go and work things out. And I'm seeing miles, I'm seeing speed. So I'm thinking of using speed equals distance over time. And I'm going to have that written in a triangle. OK, then. So we're told that Rodri's journey by car is 5.5 miles. So that is a distance at a speed of 22 miles per hour. So I can go and work out his time. So for Rodri's time. I'm going to cover up the T and do distance divided by speed. So the distance is 5.5 miles divided by a speed of 22 miles per hour, divided by 22 mph. The numbers alone are going to go into my calculator. 5.5 over 22 gives me an answer of 0.25. Now, this is where you're likely to make a mistake. That is not 25 minutes. Because that is miles, and that is miles per hour, I have just told you that is 0.25 hours. Another way, as my calculator will tell me, is saying that 0.25 as a decimal is a quarter. Another way of saying a quarter of an hour, or quarter past, is 15 minutes. So that has taken, Rodri, 15 minutes to do that journey. Okay? We're then told that Megan's average speed is 12 miles per hour, and she arrives five minutes before Rodri, and they set off at the same time. OK, it says that up by here. They set off at the same time. She arrives five minutes before. So we know that Megan's time must be 15 take away five, which is 10 minutes. Now, her speed is in miles per hour, and that is in minutes. So we need to change 10 minutes into hours by dividing that by 60. So 10 divided by 60 
is just a six. It's just cancel down the fraction. It's a horrible decimal, so we'll keep it as a as a fraction. So one sixth of an hour. So then to work out the distance that she uh, she cycles, we want to do distance. Cover up the D. Speed times time. Okay, so her speed is twelve, and her time is one sixth of an hour. So we'll say that Megan's distance, Megan distance, is equal to her speed, so twelve miles per hour times by one sixth of an hour. Okay, so twelve times by one sixth comes to two miles. So her distance was two miles. Part B. Gary travelled a distance of 231 kilometres in 3 hours and 30 minutes. Calculate his average speed in kilometres per hour. They're trying to get us with exactly the same thing. That's hours and minutes. If we were going to say 30 past, what's another way of saying 30 past, half past, that is 3.5 hours. Using then the speed equals distance over time triangle. To go and work out his average speed, we would do distance divided by time. So his distance was 231 kilometers. His time was 3.5 hours. So to work out his speed in kilometers divided by hours, kilometers per hour, to 231 over, don't press that, 231 over 3.5 to get 66, which is an answer there. They are banking on you doing three, uh, doing 3.30 then. You'll see there the answer 70. Look, they put that there to purposely try and catch you out. Okay, then have a quick read of the question for number 16. I'll start going through it in a moment. Okay, then it says, Yared is going to make a door wedge. The cross-sectional wedge is shown below. The horizontal height is 12 centimetres. Oh, sorry, the horizontal length is 12 centimetres and the vertical height is 3 centimetres. Now, that tells me that there's a right angle there as well. They then want me to work out what X is. So that is a line. We know the two other lines. If we want to know all three sides at the end, we are using Pythagoras' theorem, which would be A squared plus B squared equals, now I always say H squared, but you can use whatever you like there. C squared is fine. You can say X squared as that's what that is. I'm going to call it H squared because it's opposite the right angle, which is the hypotenuse. So that is going to be 12 squared plus 3 squared is equal to H squared. I now physically put into my calculator 12 squared plus 3 squared. That equals 153 is equal to H squared. To find out what the hypotenuse is, I want to get rid of that squared. So I'm going to square root both sides. And the square root of 153 is this big long number here. Now I'm just going to write that here. 12.36931688. They've asked the answer to be to three significant figures. That means that I start counting after the first non-zero number. That is non-zero, so one, two, three. It wants it equivalent to one decimal place in this question is the same as um, three significant figures, okay? So that would be 12.4. It then says, the wedge must fit under Yarrod's door. The angle Y must be less than 15 degrees. So that his wedge will fit under his door, you must show all your working. Now, here's the angle Y. Opposite that angle Y, we call the opposite, and we know it, so I'm going to underline it. Next to that angle is what we call the adjacent side. I'm going to underline it because we know it. And this side here, opposite the right angle, is called the hypotenuse, okay? And we do technically know it. I've just gone and worked it out, but these numbers are whole numbers, and they're already given to us. Now I'm going to write out the word Sokotoa, and that's to, designed to help me remember three formulae. I'm going to cross out anything with an O in it or anything with an A in it. So there they go. I'm going to choose TOA because that's double crossed out. I'm now going to say TAN, that's what the T stands for, angles so TAN Y, is equal to the opposite side, 3, divided by the adjacent side, 12. Now I want to get the Y completely by itself, so to do that I do inverse TAN of both sides. Those ones cancel, leave me with just Y. And now I do TAN minus 1 of 3 over 12, and that goes into my calculator. Shift TAN, 3 over 12. Close the bracket, gives me an answer of 14.0, blah, blah, blah. So I'm going to just say 14.0 degrees to one decimal place. And we're told that it had to be less than 15. I have an answer that is less than 15. Okay, so I've gone and shown it. So I'm going to say 
less than 15 degrees, so will fit. Okay, I'm not going to turn over this page just yet because it says part B. Yara decides to make a larger wedge mathematically similar. Now that word's bolded, so it's important to the one shown in part A. This wedge is to have vertical height of um, 4.5 centimeters. Now you can see here, I know this is 4.5. I look for the corresponding length here because it is similar. That word there tells me that I can do that. That means there must be a scale factor. I times this triangle by a number and it will give me all the sides on the other one. So to work out the scale factor, I do the bigger side, so 4.5 divided by the smaller corresponding side on this one. That goes into my calculator. 4.5 divided by 3 tells me the scale factor is 1.5. I times everything by 1.5 on this triangle, and it will give me the dimensions on this triangle. I'm asked to work out what the horizontal length is. So that's this length here. So I'm going to do 12 times by 1.5. 12 times by 1.5 is 18 centimetres, so the answer is 18. Okay then, over the page, on to question 18. It says, a grass racetrack is shown in the diagram below. This is the region shaded in the diagram. Each end of the grass track is shown, or is created from semicircles. The inner semicircles have a radius of 5, the outer have a radius of 20. Each of the straight sections of the racetrack is 65 metres. And they've shown a lot of that stuff in the diagram, OK? There's nothing new there. It's, it's, it's all in the diagram. What is the total area of the grass in the two straight sections? So we want to know this distance here to here. We want to know what that area and on the other side is as well, OK? Now, if that whole thing is 20, but to here is 15, as we're told up there, then this must be 5. So to work out this area, we want to do 5 times 65, and there's going to be two lots of that. So it's to be 5 times by 65 to work out the area of just B, and then to find A, I just double that area up, okay? So 5 times 65 doubled is, 5 times 65 doubled is 650 metres squared, okay? We're then asked to calculate what the area of the entire grass racetrack is. You must show all you're working. Well, the good news is, is that I already know all of this bit here and all of this bit here. OK, the thing I don't know is what this curve bit and this curve bit is here. OK, now I'm just going to draw that down here. But I'm actually going to cut this bit out and just join them together. And we can see it's just a circle. Now, here we have a circle of radius 15 metres. And then here, we have a radius of 20 metres, OK? Now, if I work out what all of the big circle is, that's going to find the entire area all the way across. But what we don't want is we don't want this inner circle. So what I need to do is work out the area of the big circle and then take away the area of the small circle, and it will tell me what is in this bit of the racetrack on both sides, OK? So I'm going to say um, curved area is equal to area big circle take away area small circle so the area of the big circle is pi r squared the radius of the big circle is 20 take away pi r squared of the small circle would be 15 and that's just, just going to go straight into my calculator And I get the answer, I get initially 175 pi. If I press SD, you'll see that I get a number for that, but it's much nastier. It's not a very nice number at all to be dealing with here. So rather than writing that out, I'm just going to leave it in pi for now. To now work out what the total area is, we come back here. I said that was A, that was B. We already know that comes to 650 metres squared. So then the curved area, which I'll just call C for both, because I've worked it out all together anyway, merged together into that. Um, it's going to be the 650 metres squared plus the 175 pi metres squared to get a total area of 1,199.8 
meters squared. Absolutely fine to round now because it's my final answer. Okay. We're then asked below quite a challenging question actually. Um, it says, Part C, the grass is to be treated with a fertilizer. It costs 20p to treat each three meters squared. So I'm going to write here, actually, I'm going to write it as pounds and pence rather than just pence. Um, 0 0.20 is equal to three meters squared. I want to know how much is 1199.8 meters squared. To do that, I need to know how many threes fit into that. So in my calculator, I'm going to do 1199.8 divided by 3, and I find out that the answer is 399.93 reoccurring. Okay, whatever I do to one side, I now do to the other. So I need to do 20 pence times by 399.3 reoccurring. So I've got that in my calculator already. I'll times it by 20 pence, and I'll find the answer is... 79 pounds and 99 pence so pretty much 80 quid but that's the price i've worked out 79.99 okay which is something we usually see in shops isn't it rather than charging exactly 80 they charge 99 pence to make it seem good. okay have a quick look at the question challenging question again um i think possibly the last question actually not quite last but one yeah penultimate question have a quick read of it and i'll start going through it Okay, then it says hot water is often stored in cylinders. The water in the cylinder is heated for use in the shower. A plumbing engineer wants to calculate how long the shower can continuously run before the water runs cold. He uses the following formula to work it out. C equals H brackets blah, blah, blah. Okay, and then it tells us what all of this information is here. Now, a highlighter here is definitely your best friend. Okay, now here we're given some numbers that we want to match up to what letters they are so we can run them through the formulas, okay? We're asked to use the formulae in this question to find out the additional hot water that feeds into um, Daisy's cylinder in litres and the number of minutes that Daisy's shower will run continuously before the um, water runs cold. Now, we're told that C is the additional water, uh, additional water volume that feeds in in litres, so that H is the volume of hot water that the cylinder holds in litres, etc., etc., okay? First thing I'm going to do is try and match up. I'm going to go through these numbers and match them up the letters. So Daisy's cylinder holds 300 litres of hot water. H is the volume of hot water that the, liter hold, that the uh, cylinder holds. So H is 300, okay? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to write that just after the question here. It'll make your life a million times easier. The next number I've got is the temperature of hot water in the cylinder is 60 degrees. So the temperature of hot water in the cylinder... Now, this says that M is the temperature of the water in the shower, so that's not that. We're looking for the hot water in the cylinder. Hot water in the cylinder in degrees Celsius is X. So 60 comes here. We're then told the temperature of cold water that feeds it into Daisy cylinder is 8 degrees. So cold water into the cylinder is 8. Why is the temperature of cold water that feeds in the cylinder? So that's it, isn't it? So that is 8, so 8 is going here. We're then told the water in Daisy shower is set as a temperature of 32 degrees. So T is the time spent. No, that's not what we're told. We're told the temperature. F is the rate here. Oh, okay, right, there we go. It's the one from above. M is the temperature of the water in the shower. So that came all the way down there. That was sneaky. So M is the temperature of the water in the shower. So that's 32 there. And then T, or any other colours, definitely starting to run out of colours now. T is the time spent. Right, let's read what this says. It says her shower has a flow rate of 26 litres per minute. F is the flow rate. That's what that is. Okay, so we don't know. We haven't highlighted C. We haven't highlighted T. However, they're, two, they're the two formulas there. Okay, so that's not bad news at all. So what we need to do now is just substitute these numbers into that formula. I'll do the C one first. I'm going to say C is equal to H. H is 300. Bracket X. X is 60. Take away M. M is 32. Close your brackets. All over. M again, so 32. 
and then take away y, and y was 8, so take away 8, okay? That is just going to go into a calculator as it looks. Your calculator will be able to stand up to that. Press the fraction button, 300, brackets, 60 take 32, close your brackets, 32 take away 8, gives me an answer of 350. So I now know that C is 350, and now to go and work out T, T is equal to what C is, I've just found out what C is, C is 350, plus H, H was 300, all divided by what F is, F is 26, so I'll divide that by 26. So T is equal to 350 plus 300 divided by 26, that comes to 25. Oh, 20, why did I say 26? 25 then. Okay. Okay, last question. Have a quick read and then I will start going through it. Okay then, it says Dr. Khan and her daughter Farrell have different opinions about the mean temperature in their hallway. Dr. Khan and Farrell recorded the temperature in the hallway at 4pm each day during the 30 days of April. In her notepad, Dr. Khan summarised the temperatures in a group frequency table. Unfortunately, the page is torn from a notepad. She has lost some of the data. Calculate an estimate for the mean of these 30 days. OK, so we know that all of these should have added up to 30. Well, there's only one missing entry. So 4 and 8 is 12. Add 8 is 20. So this must have been 10 because... The total should have added to 30, okay? So that's the first mark we can get. To estimate the mean, we take a guess at somewhere between 20 and 21, and we take that in the middle, we call that the midpoint. So that's going to be 20.5, 21.5, 22.5, and 23.5. To then work out the mean, um, the estimate of the mean, we do the midpoint times by the frequency. So we're going to do 20.5 times 4, that is 82. We're then going to do, we need to calculate it for the rest, 21.5 times 8 is 172. We then do 22.5, also times by 8, which is 180. And then 23.5 times, uh, times by 10, we can do that, 235. To then work out the mean, we add up the total of the midpoint times the frequency column. So 235 plus 180 plus 172 plus 82 comes to a total of 669. Never add up the midpoint column. I usually grey out underneath it to stop you accidentally doing that. So the estimate of the mean used in this table would be 669, the total of the midpoint times frequency column, divided by the total frequency. And that will tell me that it is 669 divided by 30 is 22.3. Okay, same answer goes down below there if you want to write in there as well. We're then asked here, what assumption have you uh, have you made calculating an estimate for the mean um, temperature at 4 p.m. for April in Dr. Khan's hallway? Well, the assumption I've made is that those four temperatures were all exactly halfway. They could have all been exactly 20 or just under 21, judging by that. But I've assumed that they're all in the middle. OK, so that all temperatures... are at the midpoint, okay, which that means that it could be uh, mis a mistake, okay. It then says, Farah recorded the same temperatures as her mother each day during April. She found that the actual mean temperature in the hallway during April was lower than correctly calculated estimate of the mean. Explain how this can be. Well, we've assumed that they're all at the midpoint. If they're actually lower, then they must have all actually been lower than that. So rather than being 20.5, all four of them, they're all like 20.4 or 20.3 or something. So I'm going to say for all um, temperatures recorded, they must have been lower than the midpoint. Okay, hopefully that was useful. If it was, please hit the subscribe button and you will get updates as and when I release more videos. Thank you very much for watching.